Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number five in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of iced coffee. That is straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is sponsoring this series of lessons on the Raspberry Pi, and we are using their ultimate Raspberry Pi kit. Those of you who don't have your gear yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. Hop on over there and pick your gear up because believe me, your life and my life are going to be easier in this class if we're both working on the same set of hardware. So run on over there and pick your kit up. But enough of this shameless advertising. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you about the binary number system. Now, why is this so important? Well, I should probably say this maybe is one of the most important lessons in this entire video series. Why? Because all computers, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino, your Macintosh, or the fastest supercomputer on the face of the earth. All of those devices, all of those computers have one thing in common, and that is they only know two things. They know zero and they know one. That's all they know. They don't know anything except zeros and ones. And zeros and ones, a number system that's based only on zeros and ones, that is called binary or base two. Now, what numbers are we as normal human beings used to? We are used to the decimal number system or the base 10 number system. How does that work? Well, you start at zero and you go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you get to nine, you're out of character. So you go back to zero and you carry the one you got a 10. That's how the binary number or that's how the decimal number system works. And that's how we think of numbers in the real world. But when it comes down to computers, what you've got to understand understand is how are computers made. Computers are made of very, very large numbers of a very, very simple fundamental element. And that fundamental element that makes up computers is simply switches or the fundamental element is a switch. And then you have many, many, many bazillions and bazillions of those switches on a piece of silicon and that becomes the Arduino or that becomes the Raspberry Pi or that becomes your Macintosh or your Windows desktop. OK, so all computers are simply made up of very, very large numbers of on off switches. Yes, those switches are connected together in very sophisticated and very complicated ways. But at the core, you have on off switches. Now, this is the way that you go from an on off switch to something like a number. Well, if the switch is off, that represents a zero. If the switch is on, that represents a one. OK, switch on, it's a one switch off, it's a zero. Now, what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how you can do use zeros and ones to represent any number. No matter how big the number is, you can represent it with nothing more than a series of zeros and ones. OK, so now we've done numbers. I can do numbers with nothing other than zeros and ones, and I can make large sequences of zeros and ones just by having lots of on off switches. Does that make sense? OK, I hope it does. Well, you say computers do a lot more than numbers. They do text. OK, well, you take the text, you take your letters, and then you come up with a number representation for each letter. And now you can represent any letter with numbers and you can represent any number 
with what? Zeros and ones. And so you could say the letter A would be the number zero, the letter B is the number one, the letter C is the number three, and so forth. Okay, so we can get any letters that we want. We can string letters together to get words. So we can have enormous documents. We could take the we could take the encyclopedia and we could represent it by nothing other than zeros and ones. We could take the Library of Congress, all the books in the Library of Congress, and we could represent it with zeros and ones. Well, that's a lot of zeros and ones, yep. But on things like modern hard drives or modern digital computers, we have lots of switches. We have lots of zeros and ones to work with. Okay, so we can get numbers, we can get text. How about colors? Well, colors is just rows and columns of pixels. And if we assign a number to each pixel to represent different colors, then we can get any color pixel by having a number there, and that number is what? Can be represented by zeros and ones. Well, if we can make a picture, if we show pictures quickly one after another, we have a what? We have a movie, okay? So I can make a movie into nothing but zeros and ones. Same thing with music, same thing with anything that you can imagine on the computer. It all comes down to translating whatever it is that you're working with into what? Into zeros and ones, and those zeros and ones come back to switches, and those switches are either on or off, okay? So that is the that is the magic of computers, and that is how they do what they do. The computer is nothing more than a vast array of on and off switches connected together in an intelligent way to give you the Raspberry Pi or the Arduino or the whatever modern digital computer you are working on, okay? So binary numbers are very important because in that process that I just described to you, the first step is to take your numbers and to change them, your, your decimal numbers, and to change them into binary numbers. And if you can change your number into a binary number, then you can represent it with a series of on-off switches. Okay, so that is what we are going to be doing today. I'll uh, give you a shot here of the studio. I'd like to show you guys the studio that I am keeping my work area neat. And so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be working on the sketch pad and I'm going to be using the sketch pad to kind of show you how uh, show you how these binary numbers work and so I need to do a little Windows management here I can come over to the sketch pad okay good that looks like that will work well to understand binary numbers the first thing that we need to understand is decimal numbers well you understand decimal numbers but I want to make sure that you're thinking about decimal numbers right and how do decimal numbers work Work. Well, we come over here and we say that we start counting with zero and then we go to one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to have to get further out of your way. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, now when we get to nine, we've actually used how many characters, how many different symbols have we used when we get to nine? Don't say nine, because we started counting at zero, and because we started counting at zero, we've actually used 10 characters. And what is our problem now? We're out of characters. Okay, we're out of characters. Well, now what we could do is we come, could come in and make up new characters, and we could kind of come in and do things like this, okay? And every time we needed a new number, we could get a new character. But you could see really quickly, like, how many characters could you memorize? Like 100? You see, so you can't just be using new symbols every time you need a new number. You need some methodology to reuse your characters. Because what we're going to do here is we are going to have 10 different characters, and we want to be able to represent any number. Well, what do we do when we get to 9? and we want to add one more. Okay, we want to add one more number to nine. Nine plus one is what? Ten? No, no, no. You can't think of it that way. The way you have to think of it is nine plus one, we are what? We are out of characters, so we have to go back to what? Zero, 
and then we carry the one. Okay, we zero and we carry the one. Now you can see that we have two places. This place, this place is worth one of the number and this place is worth 10. Okay, and so if I have one, zero, the 10 place, the 10 place is one. So I have one times 10 plus the ones place is zero. So I have zero times one. So I end up with the number 10. So similarly, let's think about the number 299. We add one, nine plus one is what? Zero, carry the one. Nine plus one is what? Zero, carry the one. And two plus one is three, all right? Now the ones place is zero. The tens place is zero. Now we have a hundreds place, and that is three times 100 is equal to 300. Okay, so now let's just think of the number 549. How do we get that? Well, it's five in the hundreds place, so that's five times 100, and then plus four times what? Four times 10 plus what? Nine times one. And so this is gonna be equal to 500 plus 40 plus nine is 549. And so the key concept here is in base 10, this position is worth one this position is worth 10 times the number, and this position is worth what? 100 times the number. The next place, 1,000. The next place, 10,000. The next place, 100,000. But this isn't anything fundamental that we decided to use 10 characters and count to nine and then start cycling through again. We could have had a number system that was just based on, let's say three characters. Let's say I could have this, I could have this, and then I could have this. And this would be like zero, one, and two. And then I would go, what would the next number be? What would the next number be? Well, two plus one, that would go back to zero. And then I would need to carry a one. And so I would have a one over here, which would be this symbol. Okay, so we could have any number of different symbols Okay, and those symbols could be anything, but we just use up all of our symbols, then we cycle back to the first one, and then we carry over the one that is one. Does that make sense? Okay, so now I've talked about kind of the arbitrary case. I've talked about the real case of base 10. What do we remember? Very important. Nine plus one is what? Zero, carry the one. All right, now, man, it's wonderful living in the real world where we have 10 characters to deal with, zero through nine. Man, that is really neat. But if I live in a world on silicon for the Raspberry Pi or for the Arduino or for any desktop computer and I have switches, how many characters do I have? I have a zero and I have a one. Okay, so how would this work? How would this work? How do we make numbers that make sense that could get up to really, really, really big numbers if we use nothing but zeros and ones? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and we're going to imagine that I have five switches. Okay, I have five switches. So let me draw those. I've got one switch, two switches, three switches, four switches, five switches. When a switch is off, it's a zero. When a switch is on, it's a one. Well, what would the very, very first number be? Zero, 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 five zeros, okay? And as far as switches goes, that would be off, 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 off. Okay, and so what would that be? If all five of those switches were off, what number would that be? That would be 
let me get rid of this nonsense. That number would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that in decimal is the number 0. So if I said in binary 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, what number is that in our world? That would be a 0. Now I want to add 1 to it. Okay, so what would that be? 0 plus 1 is 1. And then all of these would be 0 as well out here. And so 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 would be the decimal number what? Our old friend 1. So far it seems pretty easy, okay? But now I'm going to add 1. So 1 plus 1 is what? 2. No, no, we don't have a 2. We are out of character. 0 plus 1, I don't have another character. So what do I have to do? I've got to go back to 0 and carry the 1. And then these out here remain 0. So what would this be in switches? It would be off, 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 on, off. And that would be the number 2. Now I want to add 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. And then I just added 1. That happened out here. So the 1 comes down and 0, 0, 0. All right, now I'm going to add 1, starting here, and, and this is the number what? This is the number 3, okay? Now I'm going to add 1, 1, the one that I have there, this 1, this 1. 1 plus 1 is what? It's 0, and then carry the 1. Well, there's already a 1 there, and I carry a 1, so 1 plus 1 is what? Again. 0, carry the 1. All right, and now these zeros will come down. That's the number 4. Now I add 1. Well, 0 plus 1 is what? 1. And this is easy because I didn't have any carries. All of these just come down. Now 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. Okay, this 1 comes down and 0, 0. Now 0 plus 1 is 1. And then I have a 1, a 1, a 0, a 0. I'm going to do this because I want you to really understand it. And I know you're going to get tired if you already understand it. But let's go through and let's count all the way up. <clears throat> okay, we need to fill this in. This one was 5. This one was 6. This one was 7. Now I add a 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1, and then a 0. Now I add a 1, that's 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now I add a 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1, 0, 1, 0. Now I add a 1 to 0, and what do I get? A 1, bring the 1, 0, 1, 0. All right, now I add a 1 to 1. It's 0, carry the 1. There's a 1 there, so 1 plus 1 is what? 0, carry the 1, and then 1, 0. Let's fill these in. This is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you see, we've already counted up to 12 objects, and we're just using five switches. Okay, let's keep going. Now we've got 0. I add 1 over here. 1 to 0 is 1. And then 0, 1, 1, 0. Now I add a 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. And then bring the 1 down, the 1, and the 0. So that is 13. This is 14. And I add 1. And I get 1. And then bring it down, 1, 1, 0. And that is 15. Okay, now I'm going to have to come back up to the top, and let's see, you guys didn't see that last one, did you? I'm going to have to turn this off for just a minute. Okay, so you see, uh, we took the zero and we added the one, so we get one, 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 and then on the left, zero. Okay, so now we're going to come all the way back up to the top, and if I add another one, if I add a number one, I'm going to add another one to this, and then what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get a 0, carry the 1, plus the 1 is 0, carry the 1. And there's a 1 there, so it's 0, carry the 1. There's a 1 there, so 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 
and now it comes up to this. Do you see how that 0, 1, 1, 1 is kind of like the odometer rolling over? Okay, it's like 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's going to then go to 1, 0, 0, 0. It's sort of like if you were at 999, uh, you know, 999 and you add 1, well, it rolls over to 1,000. And that's kind of just what, uh, what happened here. So what number is this? This is 16, and then I add a 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1, and then 0, 0, 1. And now I add a 1 to 0, and that is simple. Bring down the 1. I'm going to go faster here. Hopefully you're seeing the pattern, okay? 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. There's a 1 there, so 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. And now I have 0, 1. And let's go on and say this is 17, 18, 19, and 20. And now I add 1, and it's going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now I add 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry the 1. And then I have a 1, 0, 1. Let's add 1 to that. And so I've got 0 plus 1 is 1. Bring down the 1, 1, 0, 1. Now I'm going to add 1, and what? 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. There's a 1 there, so 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1, and I get a 1 here and bring the 1 down. Do you see how it's like I'm running? <laughs> it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing myself down to not being able to go any further, but this is 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, now I add 1. And that's going to be a 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. I add a 1, and it's 0, carry the 1, 0, 1, 1. And now I add a 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And now 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. And then 1, 1. Now the next one I add 1 is easy. 0 plus 1 is 1. And then bring down the 0, 1, 1, 1. And now what am I going to do? 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1, and then uh, 1, 1, 1. And now I can add one more. 0 plus 1 is 1, and then 1, and then 1, and then 1, and then 1. Now what if I wanted to go further than that? I would have to have another switch because this is going to be 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, and then I'd, I don't have a switch there. So this would be the largest number that I could do with five switches. This is the largest number that I could do with five switches, and this is 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. So I can count to 31. How many numbers did I represent? 32, because I started at zero. Does that make sense? So you see, I, with five switches, I can represent any number between 0 and 32. Well, you could also think, well, like there's 26 letters or something, so I could have like all the letters, maybe say lowercase, all the lowercase letters and all the numbers between 0 and 32 if I only had five switches. So you see, with five switches, you could already get like, you could encode any text that you wanted and you could have numbers up to 32. But on a digital computer, we're not talking about having five switches. We're talking about having a bazillion switches, but the pattern would continue like this. Does this make sense? This is pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, well, let me show you something even what I think is even neater. So let's come in and let's see how this works. Okay, let's go to a different color. Well, what is like this first switch here, uh, this first switch here up here, this first switch, how much is that switch worth? If that switch is on, remember how like on the decimal system we had the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, the thousands place. Well, what is this switch here worth? Well, it's just worth one. Because if it is on, like in this case, if it's on like in this case, what is that place worth? It's one. Well, now, what is this place worth? Well, we can see that by coming down here and looking at this. We can see when that switch is on, it's worth what? Two. Okay, what's this switch worth? That switch is worth, well, let's come down here. That would be like this one, right? That third switch is on, and it's worth what? It's worth four. 
What is this switch worth? Well, that would be when it's on and nothing else is on, it's worth 8. Can you guess what this one would be worth? Okay. You see the pattern 1, 2, 4, 8, what? 16. And you come over here, and sure enough, that switch is worth 16. So now let's just come into a number like 1011. What would that be worth? Well, I've got the 1 place, and so I would have a 1. I've got the 2 place here, so I would have a 2. I've got the 4 place here, so I would have a 4. Okay, and then I don't have an 8, but I have a 16, right? I've got a 16 place, so it would be 16. And so 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 would be 22, 23. Okay, and that is indeed what that number is. Do you see? Do you see how that works? Why is this so important? <clears throat> Why is this so important? Because if we're really going to learn the computer, if we're really going to be able to work with the computer, we've got to be able to think like it thinks. And when we're coming into the Raspberry Pi and we're starting to interact with those GPIO pins, we've got to start being able to think in binary so that we're thinking in the same language, we're thinking in the same lingo that the Raspberry Pi or the other computer is thinking in. And I hope this really makes sense. Okay, let's see if we can play around with a few other things like this. Let's see if I can come in and I'm going to try to just erase this. Okay. What if I said I have the number, let me go to a different color here. I have the number 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. And now I'm going to add to it 0, 0, 1, one zero all right well one plus zero is what it's one zero plus one is one one plus one is what zero carry the one and then a one zero and a zero is going to be a one and then this is a zero okay so zero zero one zero one plus zero zero one one zero is what it is zero one uh, zero one zero one one okay so you see i just did what i just did addition with binary numbers but is it right well what was this first number zero zero one zero one we can see here that that was the number what that was the number five and then zero zero one one zero that is where that is uh here Okay, and that is what? That is the number 6. Now, what is this one? 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, 0, 1, up. Stop that. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. That is what? That is the number 11. Okay, so 00101 plus 00110 is 01011. 00101 is 5. 00110 is 6. And what do we know? 5 plus 6 is 11. So you see, even though it's a, num a different numbering system, it's still like really works, right? It really works the way we would think that if I add the binary number for 5 and I add the binary number for 6, then I get the what? I get the binary number of 11. Well, let me do one other one just so that you can see. What if I had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1? And what if I multiplied it by 0, 0, 0, 1, 0? Okay, well, I'll take the 0 and I'll multiply it by the top row. Well, 0 times 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, well, that's just all zeros, right? Now, I go to the next digit and I'll start here at this place, just like standard uh, multiplication. And the 1 times the top row would be what? 1, 1, 
0, 0, 0. Now, do you see how I just did completely normal multiplication, but just with the new binary rules? Now, what do I do in multiplication? In long multiplication, I would add those two rows, and that would be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. All right, so now what is this number? What is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1? Well, that is the number 3. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, that is the number what? And then, so this is saying 3 times 2, and I get the answer 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Well, what's 0, 0, 1, 1, 0? 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 is what? 6. So 3 times 2 is 6, just like the binary number of 3 times the binary number of 2 is what? The binary number of 6. Do you see how that works? Do you see how that works? Now, just doing this by hand, I don't want to go up to 237 million, but if I wanted to go up to 237 million, I would just need more switches. OK, but remember, on the Raspberry Pi or on any modern computer, you have a bazillion on off switches. In fact, like a modern Intel microprocessor chip, uh, it would have probably eight billion, eight with a B, eight billion on off switches or 10 billion on off switches. If you think of a, di a disk drive, a modern disk drive, a terabit bit, that would be a trillion little on-off switches on that hard drive. Okay, so you see, you got a whole lot of switches to work with, so you can get really, really big numbers, and that also means you can get really a lot of different colors, and you can get a lot of different pixels, and you can put those pixels together and get a movie. Okay, so if you have nothing but a switch, and you hook them together correctly, then you can do any math, you can do any picture, you can do anything that you would do in the real world with binary, with digital uh, decimal numbers, you can do that with binary numbers in the, uh, in the uh, uh, kind of silicon world, in the world of switches, in the world of zeros and ones. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to think of, if there's anything else that I could do. Well, what I would say is like, okay, what would you do when you got here and you're at 31 and you wanted to add one? You would need what? You would need another switch out here and then you would have a one and then a zero, 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 zero. And then what is this switch position worth? It's worth 32. OK, and then this would be the number 32. So you see how you could just keep going and just keep going and just keep going. All right. And that is how a computer works. When you put in a number, it changes it to binary and then it does everything in binary. When you have a color, that color is a number and that number is binary. So everything comes down to zeros and ones. Does this make sense? guys? I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, go back and watch it again because, because this is how computers work. It has to be the way that you're thinking in order for things to make sense as we move forward. All right, so what is your homework assignment for next week? You say, hey, I thought this was about the Raspberry Pi. You haven't talked about the Raspberry Pi. Well, let me talk about the Raspberry Pi right now. Okay, so you can see here I've got my live shot of my Raspberry Pi. And then remember last week, I took the wires off, but remember last week, we, we had this simple circuit where we were lighting up the LED. We were going through the current limiting resistor, and then we were lighting up this LED based on commands that we were doing in Python. And we were using Python on the on Python on the Raspberry Pi to blink the uh, to blink the LED. Okay, now this is what your homework assignment is for. Uh, 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 for next week. And the homework assignment is to create a, a five switch, a five digit binary counter using not one LED, but how many LEDs? Five LEDs. And so in order to do that, what you would do is you would come up and instead of having one LED, you would have five. You would have one, two, three, four, Five. And so instead of having one little 
resistor and LED. You're going to need five LEDs and you're going to need five resistors. Also, don't put this thing with the five LEDs in just crazy spread out positions across your uh, across your breadboard. Put them in there close together so that when you're doing this, when you're working uh, with your counter, it looks a lot like this. Let me erase a little bit of this and then let's see if I, I can kind of show you. Uh, let's see. Let me make this a big eraser so I can erase quicker. I can't just clear it because I don't want to lose some of this stuff. Okay, and so I'm going to come over here and let's think about this. Okay, let's think about this. Well, that would be one, two, three, four, five LEDs like that. Now let's think of this number. Let's think of this number zero, 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 one. Well, what that would that be? That would be off, off, off off and then what would you do with this LED? You would turn it on. Okay. And then similarly, if we did this one, if we did two, that would be off, 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 on, off. Okay. I'll do one more. Off, 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 what? On, on. Okay, so what I want you to do is it should just have them all off and then let the person see it. Then you come in and then they're all off, but the first one, the number one, leave it for like a second. Then like the number two, leave it for a second, the number three. And so you just count down in binary using your LEDs. All right, so what do you need to do? You need to keep your circuit neat. So you're going to have to have five LEDs, you're going to have to have five resistors, and you're going to have to bring the wires over. Then what your assignment is, is to count up to 31. You count from zero to 31 using five LEDs. Then either use your like little, uh, use a webcam or use your phone or something. But what I want you to do is record your circuit and your setup and your homework solution working, then post it to YouTube. In the description, when you post it to YouTube, leave a link back to this video so anybody watching yours kind of knows what you're talking about. And then on this video, down in the comments, leave the link in the comments to your homework solution. And I will look at every single homework solution and I'll maybe comment like, well, it's working, but you've got a really, really ugly kind of comp, you know, you've got a, you've got a rat's nest for a circuit. Or I might say that's good, but you're blinking through them too fast. So I'll make comments on them, but you need to do your homework. Now, if you're able to do it, leave a comment down below. I am legend. And if you just get confused and can't do it, leave a comment. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to I want to see if you guys are able to figure this out. Now, if you are really new, if you are really new to this type of stuff and you're confused by it and you don't get it, that's okay because in the next lesson I'm going to show you my solution to it. And so if you got it and this is like really easy, then maybe you don't have to to look at the next lesson. You don't have to look at my solution video. You can jump just jump to the the next lesson or even if you got it maybe it would make sense to work uh to work it out just i mean to watch it just to see did you do it the same way i did it or did i do it uh did i do it a different way okay guys man i hope you all are having as much fun taking these lessons as i am making them if you're enjoying these lessons make sure that you give us a thumbs up if you have not already subscribe to the channel when you subscribe make sure you ring that bell so you'll get notification of all my future lessons in the series that are coming out and then as always uh, share this with other people on social media because the world needs more people doing engineering and coding 
and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Hey, really appreciate you guys that are helping me out over at Patreon. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. And again, as always, I want to really express my appreciation to SunFounder. SunFounder is making this series of lessons available, is, is sponsoring the videos, so it's making them available to you. Remember when you're ordering your gear, remember our friends over at SunFounder. Okay, guys, Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.